Hi, so welcome to our video on uh, Linux permissions. So we start off the course sort of by talking about the um, history of Linux. Um, we talk about sort of like the fact that it came from Unix, this uh, sort of mainframe operating system. And so we sort of have this idea of many users working on the same system kind of baked into how Linux works. So what I'm going to do is um, just going to use uh, for my first example just a kind of a uh, just one of my lecture notes uh, basically and um, I'll throw this into permission or something like that. Okay let's open up permission. Okay so this is what you see um, when you are taking a look at regular files using the ls-l command, right? The first thing that we see here, this little guy, is um, gives you indication about the type of file this is. Um, if it's a dash, it just means it's a regular normal file. Um, you'll also see them, these for directories and things. Um, so we're going to ignore that. We're going to look at basically um, the next the next sort of uh, three bits over here. So we have R, W, dash, R, dash, dash, R, dash, dash, basically, okay? These are some um, permission flags, or we could say, I like to think of them as switches just because that's how I think about things. Um, so the first three over here are for the user. And you can see, I'll change those to maybe two, things like that. So these are for the user. And you can see that I have over here the username of eric.brower, so that's me. Um, that's the user. And usually we're dealing with one user at a time, obviously. Um, so that's, that's what that is. I am the author of that file. I'm the creator of that file, so it selects me as the user by default. The next thing that we look at are the next, well, the basically the next three bits over here. These are for the group, and you'll see different things here as we move on. On Matrix, what we have are um, basically most students and profs are part of this users group, okay? This gives us a little bit more fine control over um, who gets to see files and have permission to do stuff. And then finally, the next three bits over here are for everybody else, and that's other. Um, so people who maybe have logged on to Matrix, but they don't have a specific user account that has that. If they have a user account that is not part of the users group, then this is who the others are, basically. Okay, so users, group, other, it's always in that order. Um, and uh, let's talk about what these next dashes mean. So basically, um, let's see. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about are what do these actual permissions mean? So we have an R, W, and uh, we have a dash right there. The R means that um, we have that permission set um, it's turned on. The W means we have that permission set. It's turned on. Anything that is not, if it's a dash, it means that permission has been disabled. It's been turned off. Okay. And the way it looks like if you have all permissions turned on possible, it looks like this. Well, what does that mean? Well, basically read, well, R is read. That means that you are able to sort of open the file and see what's inside. The way that you would do this is usually using cat, more or less, or something like that. Or vim, if you prefer. But basically you can see the contents of that file. The next is w, and that is write access. And that means you're able to modify the contents of the file. Also, you're able to, hey, change the permissions of that file, or what have you, okay? Um, that's write, basically. And the final one is execute. And that basically means that you're able to use the file like it is a command or a script or a program or something like that, okay? I'll give you another example of that in one second. Let me um, go over here and just do a little bit of uh, 
witchcraft or whatever. Let's do bin C. Let's just use LS, I think, something like that. Okay, so I've gone into the bin directory, which we've talked about before. Um, we're taking a look at that and we're comparing it with what we've got. Um, what you'll notice is the way that I've got this set up by default is I'm the user, I'm the owner of this of this file. Um, I have permission to be reading the file and editing the file, which makes sense, right? I'm the author, maybe I want to go in there and change some things around, whatever. Um, people who are part of the group, users, have only access, read access. And that makes sense, that basically means um, you know, I don't want students going in there and making a lot of changes to my lecture notes, but I do want them to be able to read it and follow along and everything like that. And I've also got read access set up for any other users. Um, I don't think there's too many other users that are not part of this group. Um, but, you know, if, there are, if they are out there, they actually do have permission to read my notes and follow along. So I guess, uh, you know, it's a freebie, but it's probably not going to come into... It's probably not going to be an issue. Um, now let's take a look at the ls command. So you know what ls does. This is one of our core utilities. Um, it lives in a specific location. You'll notice that the um, the user of this, the person that owns this file, or ultimately has control over it, is the root user. And also it's uh, part of a group called root. I am not part of the root group and I am not the root user. So I probably fall into the other category over here, same as you. Okay? A root user has permission to be reading this file, writing this file, and executing this file. Um, which basically means if a new version of LS comes out, we can download that and install it and basically change it. Um, us group members and all other users, what we have is permission to read the file and execute the file, which makes a lot of sense, right? Um, we want all of our users to be able to run ls. Without being able to use ls, um, the shell is basically useless, and you know it's such a it's such a basic tool that most people want to be able to use it. Um, but we don't want your average student user or prof user to go in and meddle with this command because you know if they break something then it, they break it for the entire system. So hopefully that's making some sense. Um, we basically have two different kinds of files. We have normal text files which you can dump notes into. We have executables and um, we don't want to be necessarily executing text files and we don't want to be, well, whatever. So this is basically how permissions are set up. Um, it's pretty basic. We have users, groups, and others, and um, we do different things with them. So let me show you how some of this stuff actually works. I'm gonna go and um, what I've done on my normal machine is I've set up two users. I've got John and I've got student. And uh, let's see what I got in John's uh, home. I don't really have anything in John's home yet. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll just, um, I'm gonna open up a new file in Vim. I'm gonna call it um, test file, okay? And I'll just type in some stuff here. I'll just type in hello everyone or something like that, okay? And we'll save it. So um, notice that um, our permissions have been set uh, by default. Uh, the user is John. In this case, uh, what we've got is a group called John. And we can assume that probably John is the only member of this group. So it's fine. Basically, this means that we don't really use the group permissions for very much in this case. Uh, but John has permission to read and write his test file. And you can see just just now I was able to edit the file and you know do make changes. Um, the group members only have read permission, and nobody else has any other permission whatsoever. Okay, so let's go over to student over here, 
And um, maybe what we'll do is um, I'm going to try to use cat. And we're going to point at the John directory. And we're going to point it at the test file over here. And when we do this, we see we have a permission denied message and nothing gets through. OK, so we don't have read access. Um, that's going to bring us to the next step. So we have John and we have student. They're part of separate groups. And by default, uh, they don't have a whole lot of permission to be messing with each other's stuff, right? Um, so the way that we can change permission levels is with the chmod command. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the permission for others, OK? Student is another right now. It's not a group member. He's not the user. He's not John. And he's not a member of the John group. So we're going to use O to signify that we're working with the others. Uh, we're going to add a permission. The permission we're going to add is read, OK? So O plus R is going to add read permission to the others. And the last thing I have to do is point this at the file that's being changed, OK? So I hit that. I can go back over here. You can see now that the other group over here has read access. And when we try to open this on the other side, we're now able to read something from that file. OK, well, that's great. The next thing we're going to do is um, let's go and take this. And we're also going to add write access to the test file. OK? So now we've got an RW. We're allowing others to edit the file. And when I come over here, what I can basically do, let's open this up in Vim. Hello, everyone. Hello, John, from student. OK. So even though student doesn't own this file, since they have read access, we can read it on this side. And we can see that it's changing and basically it. OK, so basically. Now we've created almost like a Google Doc um, where you're sharing with other people and uh, it all works. OK, well, let's go back and we'll use chmod. And for the others, I want to take away write access because it's a little dangerous um, leaves it leaving write access on things. People can just go and vandalize your stuff. So we're going to go down and turn off write access. and. If we try to open it now, we're going to get a message down here saying this is read only. If we try to change anything, we get a warning. It seems to let us do it, you know, but then as soon as I try to save my work, it's going to say no warning, read only. And the only way we can get out of this is just by using Q exclamation mark. Okay, so we are not able to save those changes that we saw before. And that's basically it. That's the difference between read and write access. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, one inter interesting thing to note, though, just before we move on. Um, so we had this test file, right? Now, at the moment, we don't have any write access. Uh, but if I go and point it at John test file um, and then copy it to home over here, Let's take a look at what we got. So actually, if we um, we don't have write access on this thing, but student is still able to make a copy of test file and then transfer it to their home. And um, now they have permission to change their own copy of test file. So that's one thing. Um, read access will allow people to make copies of things. And this is why, you know, when you were uh, a couple weeks ago, you're able to make a copy of Frankenstein, throw it into your home directory, and then use that to read or whatever. You should have write access to be changing that now. Okay. Now I'm just going to take a quick, 
I'm just going to take a quick moment to sort of talk about um, execution. I showed you with the ls command, um, but I want to show you also with um, bash scripts that you may create. So I've got something over here. Let's open test script. Um, you might recognize this as us working with uh, Echo. Um, so we're going to obviously be talking about this later on in the semester, but I just want to give you an example of this working right now. Um, this is basically just one line in a file, and you may recognize it as a command that you can run in Bash. When I try to run it here, um, you're going to see that it has a permission denied message. Um, this is just because we haven't turned on any execute permissions yet. So if we take a look at test script over here, uh, you can see RWR nothing. Um, so what I can do is turn on execution uh, permission. And I'm going to do this for the user, for the group, and for others. And I'm going to add execute um, to test script. Okay. You can use UG, you can use U, you can use UO, you can use GO. Um, if you want to define all users, groups, and others, you can uh, replace UGO with A, and A just stands for all. So what we're doing right now is we're giving everyone execution permissions. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, so you see on my shell, the it, changes color and we can see RWX, RX, and X. Okay? Let's give that a shot. So if I do it over here, I'm able to run it and it says hello to the user that you see here. Let's go over here. Um, so this time John is going to be trying to run something in the student directory and the one he's trying to run is test script. Okay? Let's see what happens. Um, we get a permission denied message over here. So one thing to note is that if you want to ex uh, execute scripts, you need execution permission, yes, but you also need read permission. You need read and execute permission as a bare minimum to be able to execute a script. Okay, so you'll notice over here we're missing the read permission for others. So let's add that now. Let's use chmod others plus read test script. Okay. So we can take a look at that again. That's executing just fine. ls-l, there we go. We see rwx, rx, rx. Let's try to run it again over here. Now you notice um, it's working. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind. Okay, so I hope that kind of wraps up for um, how file permissions work. Um, it's fairly straightforward, I think. Read, write it should be pretty. The idea of reading and writing things should be um, pretty pretty common to you guys. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, directories. Um, so directories are a little bit different. Um, I'm going to create a directory over here called permtest. Okay, and we'll just take a look at what's going on here. So I've got permtest. Let me just create, change that a little bit. Um, I think what I want to do is add read permission for others. And I'm also going to add execute permissions to it. Oh, sorry. So this is what you get if you do not add the argument to tell the shell uh, which thing that you're trying to manipulate. Okay, so I'm going to add uh, permission over there. I'm also going to add a plus x to perm test. Okay, let's take a look at that again. Okay, so you can see here from the D that this is a directory, um, and I've got rwx, rx, rx. Um, the way that read and write 
uh, work with directories is very straightforward. It's almost exactly the same as files. The only difference being that you're working with a directory. So if you have an R, that means that people are able to read the contents of the directory. So let me give you an example of that. I'll go over to student over here. And um, let's see if we can ls John perm test. Okay. Well, we have nothing in perm test so far. Maybe what I'll do is um, let me move test file into perm test. Eh? Okay. Now let's see if we can use ls over here. Um, we are able to use ls with perm test. So this is what I mean by reading the contents of the directory. We're able to use ls on it basically and see what's inside right um, the way it works with writing is um, well let's see if I try to touch something let me go over here and I'll try to create a test two. do not have permission to do so also similarly if I try to go in there and start doing some uh, malicious kind of stuff like get rid of test file or something don't have permission to do that. So writing in this case means you're manipulating the contents of a directory. You're able to go in, remove files, um, rename files, or whatever, you know, or create new files. I don't have permission to do that, which is probably a good idea, you know. Um, now, we also have the X over here. And the X, well, we don't execute directories we never execute directories. Um, that just kind of makes doesn't make sense. Um, but we do use the X uh, for a different kind of permission that is specific to directories, and that is pass-through. Pass-through is basically the, um, it is a permission that sort of affects all other permissions. Um, it allows us to enter into a directory and see what's inside or execute things inside of it. So let me show you an example. Um, if I go over here, I can go cd john, not john, john perm test. So it says that I am in this directory. Right now I'm able to see inside of it. If I go over here and turn off read permissions for perm test, now I'm over here. Let me see if I can still ls. I can't ls. I am not able to see anything inside this directory right now. Um, but if I really cat test file, I'm not able to read anything in the directory. I'm not able to see the contents. Um, but if I do know that there is a file called test file in there, I'm still able to access it and everything like that. Okay. So you're blind, but if someone gives you the specific file name in the directory and you have pass through set, you're, you're still able to execute it. This is exactly how your assignments work, okay? You don't have permission to be, let me bring that up. Let's go into CD ULI 101, okay? So my location is ULI 101. If I do ls in here, I'm not able to open anything inside of it. I'm not able to read any of the contents. Um, but I am able to execute the assignments that are contained in this directory. Okay? I can't see them, but I can run them. <laughs> You'll probably notice that you won't have write permissions to be going in and deleting or, you know, creating new files in this in this location. So, you know, we kind of block that kind of stuff off. Anyway, back over here. Um, so we've had pa pass through set this whole time. Okay. Now, what happens if I turn off pass through? I'm going to go for the others. I'm going to subtract x perm test. So let me go over here and let's see if I can CD into this anymore. So now I'm not even able to change directory into perm test and
if I try to open anything inside of it, I don't have permission to do that either. So let's take a look inside the perm test. It's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, and this is like if nothing else, if you don't remember anything else about permissions, remember that usually you gotta make sure that everything's unlocked properly. So from here we can see that we do have read permission for test file, but if we don't have paths through set on the directory, then nothing gets through. It's kind of like you can unlock <clears throat> you can unlock the door to your bedroom in your apartment, but if nobody's able to get through the lobby, then it really doesn't matter if you've locked or unlocked those doors, right? You gotta make sure that the outdoor, outside door is unlocked before worrying about anything on the inside. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there in terms of what these permissions actually mean. Just remember there's permissions mean different things for files and directories, right? Uh, let's see what we've got in our location over here. We got a bunch of stuff. Okay, um, so with that in mind, I want to now also talk about um, different ways of using the chmod command. Let me just touch something right now. I'm just going to cut, touch, test. Okay, so ls-l test. Here we go. Um, so we've been using a lot of commands in terms of like uh, using a for all, u for user, g for group, o for others. And you know you can use a combination, something like that. You can use add, you can use subtract, and you can use set. And basically, set means um, you know, uh, let's see, for others, for users and others, I want it to be uh, R W test, something like that. Okay, so you can see that I'm sort of changing read and write at the same time. Um, so that is a what we call symbolic permission changes using chmod. Uh, symbolic because we're using symbols, we're using u to symbolize user, for example. Um, you'll have to remember those, but in addition to that, you're also going to have to remember a different way of doing stuff, which is using octal numbers. Okay? Um, this can be slightly shorter and once you get the hang of it it's super easy but let me talk about it here so you've seen this hopefully when we talked about number systems and conversions and stuff like that right these are three bits uh, three binary bits the least significant bit is on the right hand side and that's a one or a zero and um, if we were converting that to decimal it would be just one right if we see a one there, it's um, you know one, basically. The next significant bit is uh, two to the power of one, which that's value is two. So if you see a one and a zero, then this one in decimal would be a two, and this zero would still be a zero. So you put them together and you get two. If you see a one and a one, then this one indicates a two, and this one equals one. You add them together and you get a three. Well, okay, so notice we've got three bits here. And notice when we're looking at these, we've got three bits over here, right? So what I'm getting at is, consider these three bits. This is a one, this is one, and this is a zero. If you see an R, it's, it's a one. We're saying that that permission has been turned on. We see a W, we know that the write permissions have been turned on. So we got a 1 and a 1 and a 0. Going back here, if you have a 1 and a 1 over here, then you basically have a 4 plus 2, which equals 6. Okay, so basically, we can manipulate these using octal numbers. And we're saying it's an octal number just because the maximum value that you can get when you have only three bits over here is four plus two plus one which is a seven okay so we can use a number between zero and seven to indicate a value and set permissions let's see what that looks like so i have test over here 
and I'm going to use chmod again, but instead of using u or g or whatever like that, I'm going to look and I'm going to try to ch flip this bit over here. Um, so I'm going to have, let's see, I have r and w and nothing. So that is 4 plus 2 plus 0, which is 6. Um, let's, let's leave the same thing. I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, I have an r over here, which is 4 and then a zero and a zero, so that totals four. And then the same thing over here, an R and a W, so four plus two equals six. Yep. And we would just give it once again, you have to give it the name of the file that you want to change. We take a look at it, yeah, nothing's really changed, right? So let me take this and change it a little bit. Let's go, um, let's go six, four, zero. Okay, take a moment to anticipate what you think you're going to see. Let's take a look. So I have a 6 over here, I have a 4 over here, and then dash, 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 that's 0. So that's the 6, 4, 0 right here. So this is a really good way of setting um, all the permissions at once, right? 6, 4, 0 just changes everything. Um, the symbolic way is usually more if you are only interested in flipping a couple of bits at a time, right? You just want to add, execute permissions to something, but you don't want to change everything else. You just do, you know, A plus X, or you even you, should, you can shorten it to plus X. All right, and finally, uh, the last thing we got to talk about is UMask. So let me touch test two. Let me touch test three. Let's take a look at these. I just created two new files and you see that they already have a permission level set to them. And the permission level that they've been given is basically six, four, zero. Okay. So what's going on here? Well, we can specify the default permissions for everything that are that's being created. Um, and the way that we do that is with UMask. It's just a UMask, just like that. UMask cannot take symbolic arguments. It can only take octal arguments, okay? So it's going to be expecting three octal digits of some kind, but it is backwards from how chmod works. When we're looking at chmod, let's take a look at this again. When we're looking at chmod, we are interested in all the bits that are turned on. Okay, so we see r is turned on, that's a 4. We see that right is turned on, that's a 2. We add those together and we get 6. So we say 6, then we look at the next one, we see for groups, we see that the R is on and everything else is turned off. So we look and R is going to be 4, so 4, basically. The way that we do it with UMask is we don't look at the bits that are on. We look at the bits that are off. So it's basically backwards. Okay. Let's see how this would look if we were setting this exact permission level for all new files. So Let's take a look at only the dashes. The first dash that we he see here is for X, right? And this bit is one. So we're only looking at one, so we would do UMask one. Then we look at the group. And we can see right is there. We're gonna ignore read. We're looking at write, which is two, and execute, which is one. Two plus one is three. And then finally, we're looking at the three dashes here. So four plus two plus one is seven. We don't have to give it any more arguments after this because we're not looking at any specific files. We are setting a default for all new files. That's a UMask right there. Let's touch a test four. So you can see nothing has changed. That's totally fine. But now let's go 
with U mask and let's do U mask and this time we want to do something like 660 or maybe 664 let's do 664 right so let me just bring this up again so we can use it so I have a 6 over here that means the one that I'm interested in is the 1 so let's do 1 now if we want to set this so that all new files have RW access for the group then it's going to be RW is turned on the only thing that's turned off is the execute so that's going to be another one now for others let's say that we want to give them read access so that means the four is going to be turned on but the write and the execute are turned off so that's going to be two plus one two plus one is three and I obviously have to tell it that we're doing UMask. Okay, so here we go. Okay, let's go ahead and touch test five. And let's run this again. So notice each time I create a new file now, it's going to have that new permission set. It's going to have 664. I hope you understand that because now I'm going to show you a shortcut. And if you don't understand the basic idea that we're only looking at the things that are turned off, then the shortcut will only confuse you. Well, okay, here it is. So assuming you understand what's going on, if you want to quickly translate between chmod and umask, all you have to do is take 7 and subtract whatever the chmod is going to be. So let's say that we want to change Let's change our UMask to something like um, 660. Okay. Uh, well, let's do 640 again. Eh? Okay, so let's go back to 640. So we want our new permission for our user to be 6. So let's take 7 minus 6. And the answer for that is 1. Um, we're going to do 4, right? So 7 minus 4 equals 3. And then finally, uh, we want to give all others um, no permission whatsoever. So that's going to be 0 for chmod. So 7 minus 0 equals 7. So now what we've got is 1, 3, 7. So here's my command, umask137. Now let's go ahead and test it. Let's do test six. And let's take a look at that again. So you can see we're back to where we were before. Um, all new files created after this point are going to have the default permission 640. Okay, so I hope that helps. See you in the next video.